What's up everyone, it's uh, Wells Howe back uh, from Beneath the Waves, Blue Carbon Program Manager, back with another episode of Explained. So here we're looking at the sediment cores, uh, which I explained in the water earlier this week. This is them actually being processed now. So we are rigging up the tanks right now to take some sediment cores. We'll be using this coring device and this slide hammer. We put this up and down until we can percuss about 40 to 50 centimeters into the seagrass meadow. Uh, which we will be analyzing to track the amount of organic carbon sequestered right here in this beautiful habitat. So at every site that we go to, we take three cores, so we can take an average of the three. Uh, each core takes about five minutes, seven minutes, depending on uh, how strong we're feeling, how quickly we can lift that weight and drop it. And then we'll take at least five meadow samples per day. So at the end of the day, we're processing about 15 cores worth of sediment. The entire Little Bahama Bank, we're looking at doing 300 to 400 cores like this. Keeps us busy, keeps us underwater, keeps us appreciating this ecosystem, it's beautiful. So what we did was we took representative samples in different types of seagrass meadows and different densities of that seagrass meadows. And now we're going to process them. So as you can see here, this is our extruding device. Ultimately, we will end up with different subsamples like you can see on the ground here. And what we're doing is we are looking at the different amounts of organic carbon that's sequestered in various levels of the sediment. So from top to bottom, this is actually where you would see seagrass leaves poking up the top. And this is about 35, uh, 30 centimeters below the surface of the bottom sea floor. Uh, so what we will do is we will actually take out these centimeter chunks. As you can see here, each spacer is one centimeter. And we will push this core down. What that will do is it'll put sediment up above the top of this that we can slice and put into baggies that are labeled where we will eventually ship them back up to our lab and dry the, the samples out. The basic process of how this works is we're going to get a wet weight of each representative sample, each centimeter, so we can determine a dry bulk density once we dry them out in the lab. Uh, once we've dried them to a uniform consistency, what we will do is we will grind them up uh, and take a representative sample of the subsample uh, and superheat that. So we'll do that for about five to six hours at 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. And we will look at the difference in weight between a pre-burn and post-burn. And what happens is the post-burn is gonna weigh less than the pre-burn. And that difference is the amount of organic carbon that you can see here in the sediment core. Uh, what we will use with that is we'll add them all up, get a cumulative uh, percentage of organic carbon, and then extrapolate that out to the whole seagrass meadow. So we can see exactly how much carbon this blue carbon habitat is pulling from the atmosphere and storing uh, for hundreds of years. What we found is each layer of sediment here is representative of years. It's about three millimeters on average per year of accretion. So looking at this core, we're looking at about 150 years worth of history uh, within the seagrass meadow. So we will also take eDNA samples and link biodiversity and usage from pre-industrial revolution times all the way back to modern day and track the health of these ecosystems as it relates to shark populations and other marine biodiversity. That's what we're doing here today. So make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. Also, you have to hit that bell notification to turn on all so you can be notified as when we come out with new videos. And please comment along and let us know what else you wanna learn about another episode of Beneath the Waves Explained.